A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the other one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord Good day, dear brothers and sisters. On this seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time, Jesus clearly tells us to love our enemies. He instructs further, Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who persecute you. In other words, to love our enemies is to forgive them rather than making revenge. It is to wish them well rather than wishing them harm. However, in reality, we know how hard it is to love our enemies. Naturally, we tend to avoid relating with those whom we find difficult to deal with, especially with those who caused us much pain. And yet, this commandment to love and forgive our enemies is actually a radical decision and a very possible thing to do. Forgiveness is possible when we appreciate how much God has forgiven us, when we are aware that every person we consider an enemy is a beloved child of God, and when we believe that God is the ultimate judge. Pope Francis gives us a better picture of why we ought to love our enemies. He says, It is because the Father continues to love everyone even when His love is not reciprocated. God makes His sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Jesus did not point the finger at those who wrongly condemned Him to a cruel death, but He opened His arms to them on the cross. Having been loved by God, we are called to love in return. Having been forgiven, we are called to forgive. Having been touched by love, we are called to love without waiting for others to love us first. Having been saved graciously, we are called to seek no benefit from the good that we do. We may take some time to reflect how gracious the Lord has been to us. No matter how many times we fail and commit sin, God continues to love and accept us. He forgives us every time we approach the sacrament of reconciliation, because God is merciful. And as we seek God's mercy, we learn to become merciful to others as well. When we live out love, forgiveness, and mercy together, what we gain is a heart of peace. All of us, in one way or another, are seeking for peace. We can only find peace when we love, when we forgive, and when we show mercy. And all these bring us to perfection. This is what Jesus means when he says, Be perfect 
just as your Heavenly Father is perfect. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to make us always aware of your gracious love, forgiveness, and mercy towards us, so that we can truly love everyone else, especially our enemies from the heart, and so imitate your perfection here on earth. Amen. Thank you.